In this video, I'm going to talk about how to expose parts of our blueprints as a variable that a designer could potentially use. And specifically, we're going to add a triggered delay for our audio trigger so that maybe we can delay the time in which the sound is being played for different instances of our blueprint. So maybe we want this one to delay one second and this one to delay 0.5 seconds, and we'll expose that number of seconds the designer can tweak. Now, the interesting thing about that is once we can do that and we learn the process of exposing parts of our blueprints, we can we can do a lot more. So I think we'll start there and um, build on that concept. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to open up my blueprint audio trigger, just like that. And this is what we have so far. Basically, the player walks into the, the box on the blueprint. Reminder, that's this box right here. And once they do, we test and see if it's the player. If it is, we play the sound, which the sound is attached as an audio component on this blueprint. So what I really wanna do is if it is the player, I want to delay for some amount of time and I want to play it right after. So I'm gonna make a little room here. But the thing is, I wanna be able to control the amount of delay for each instance of my blueprint. So this one I want one second, and this one I want 0.5 seconds and so forth. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag off this node and type in delay. And you'll see the, there's a few options here and there's, there's a little bit of a difference between the two. One will restart, the other will not each time it's called. Um, I think for this, I'm just gonna do one that will keep restarting. And this value down here is the amount of delay that will happen inside this node and we'll wait here and then we'll continue after this amount of time. Now, if I wanna hard set a amount of delay, as you can see, 0.2 right here, then I could do that. But if I want the designer to be able to specify a delay, then I need to turn that into a variable. Now there's a few ways to do this. If I were to right click and say promote to variable, that would actually do a few things. It, it's really quick. It would create a new variable and sync that up over here. But just to show you the process, I'm going to manually do it. Over here under variables, I can add more variables to my blueprint. And in this case, I want to add a float. And Unreal blueprints, they color code green as a float value. So we need to make sure that our variable, our variable type matches the type of thing that we want to plug it into. So in this case, it's a float. And if you click on the plus key next to the variables, it will create a new variable of just whatever the last type you created or some default type. doesn't matter, we'll change it. And it will request us to rename this variable to something. So let's call it what it is. This is audio delay. We'll say seconds, just to be clear. Once we've created that, we actually want to customize it a little bit. Now, if you look over here on the details panel, once you have this variable selected, right? So make sure that you select it. You're gonna notice a few things. This type that it created is a type of Boolean, which is a true or false. We don't really want that. And we wanna change this to a float type. And you can see all the color coded types here. There's a lot more under these drop downs. But green for float, um, is an easy way to, to visualize that, but if you know that a fractional value is a float anyways, make sure that our variable is type of float so that it will match. Once we do that, we can actually drag it into the blueprint like that and get a reference. And just like we've been doing with our component, we can actually hook this in and say, well, I don't know how long I want to delay I want the designer to decide this later using the variable. So once we've done that, there's something else that needs to happen. You'll see this compile thing and uh, is flagging us. So once you compile, um, your default value down here, you will be allowed to set a default value. I think zero is good because by default, we may want our audio triggers to not delay, but we want to leave the option here. So once we have our variable selected, we can set a, um, default value, so that's fine. Now the other thing is if I compile and save and I minimize out of here, you're not gonna see this pop up. Now the reason is because once we have the selected, we actually need to expose the variable inside of our details panel. For any of you who have used Unity, this would be exposing a variable in a script into the inspector with serialized field or public or something. So I need to do that, I, I need to, tell my blueprint 
to expose this piece of data inside the inspector. So to do that, this little eyeball button over here, if you hover over, you're saying, I want this to be viewable by a designer. Or you can click this instance editable. It's the same thing, but I'm just gonna click it right there. And you'll see it checked both. You compile and save now, and you minimize. Now you'll see that it will allow us to add a delay. So let's just test this out. Let's have this one be zero seconds, this other one to be one second. And once you have entered that and you see each instance of this, we can customize. I'm just gonna control S to save, hit play. Touch the first one, should be instant. Yeah. And when I touch the second one, there will be a delay. Right? So that's how we can add some customization. And it doesn't really stop there. You can do a lot of other types of variables if you wanna um, add a true or false condition to let you pass a thing. You can actually use variables to flag your blueprints, uh, your actor blueprints to give designers control over these, these kind of things. So this is just one more tool that you can use to um, give designer control to your blueprints.